Hi guys, welcome to live review number 10. So this is going to be a little bit of a special one. Uh, of course, joined by the man who together we started this. God, when was it when we began doing these? I don't know, I don't know the, um, the actual 10th one, but... It must have been in the middle of last year, wasn't it? When we yeah. started doing these, it's got to be. Yeah, so we've got a... Well, hopefully a good couple of beers. I know one of them is going to be fantastic. But, um, yeah, we thought we'd do something a little bit special for review number 10. But before we get into that one, uh, the first one, you can read it on the title. I had it as like a big surprise and then just update the information, but I don't think anyone saw that in the first place. But, um, yeah, so we've got two German beers today. And the first one, which I think we'll be starting off with in a little bit, is the uh, Felton's Pilsner, which is uh, fairly, a fairly iconic beer. Um, how how common is it back in England, Dean? Um, well, I've never had it before, and I've never seen it before. It was only with you sort of suggesting we do this that I sort of looked about um, so I've never, yeah, I've never seen it before. I managed to pick this up. My day, I got a bottle. <laughs> I was um, out and about around London, and I, I, I went into Noble Green Wines, and before I made the trip, and um, they had it in there. Yeah, uh, one pound ninety-five for uh, five hundred ml bottle. Yeah, that, that's a good price, especially for some places it sells it. But uh. Yeah, I, I think it is a relatively popular exported beer. Um, I think it's one that you would see in most bottle shops, I'd imagine, uh, as opposed to like the supermarkets. And I think it is mm. one of the the most popular um, beers sold and consumed in Germany. But I couldn't find any statistics for it, which was a bit odd. Because you usually can find that sort of stuff. But uh, yeah, very popular beer. And uh, it's even a, a football stadium as well for, I can't remember what football team. Oh, it's uh, is it Schalke. Yeah, I think Schalke. Schalke, yeah. So, you know, you can imagine how many like pints or bottles or little cups of this are sold just on a match day alone. And uh, yeah, I've got... Nice bars, right? Yeah. There's the, the crown. Got quite a history from what I remember when I was doing a little bit of research a while ago. Um, Have you ever? I think I've had it a few times every now and then just to sink back when it's been like yeah. out, of, out of friend's house or something like that. And just one of those easy drinking pilsners, I'd imagine. Um, but I can't really remember it too much. But Yes, yeah, so. um, etched on the uh, side of the neck as well for the Vulcans. Uh, yeah, it's got its own little bottle. So it's a, a nice, a really nicely presented pilsner by all accounts. It's quite, quite basic, but it's got that a sort classic of classic German look to it, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's got that sort of like classic, somewhat iconic. Even though it's quite plain, you'll remember. I mean, it's got the like sort of triangular label to it and yeah it looks like what you'd expect from a big German pilsner to be fair and then um, so are these are these guys a, a one a one brewery beer then um no they've got actually quite a big big range of stuff um okay they do they do uh it's either a land beer or a keller beer which is supposed to be based on uh, a recipe from a few hundred years ago or something along those lines. I, th I think they are quite an old brewery by all counts. So they've got that one. They've got a Rattler version of that. Um, they do a series of like the sort of like mixed beers. So you'll get one that's got like tequila mixed in it, uh, one with cola mixed in it. Like a 
sort of Shandy, Radler sort of stuff. Uh, but in terms of regular styles, I'm not too sure what they produce, but I know they've got quite a big uh, catalogue of beers. But yeah, a lot of them are the sort of like, uh, not Alka Pops, because it's still a, a beer mix, but that sort of thing. So, you know, they've got, with beers like that, a big share of uh, big market share. And I suppose this, this one is like their flagship beer then. Really. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Uh, I think, well, I was reading, it was at some point last year, they had, throughout the brewing history, one month last year, they had the most successful month. And I can't remember the figures offhand. I um, don't even think I wrote it down. But yeah, there's. it's one of those breweries where if you, if you were to look it up, you'd get a lot of information about it. So it's, a, it's quite a historic, uh, well-regarded brewery by all accounts. And very, very popular, I'd say. Yeah. And then after we've uh, finished with the Feltons, we'll be moving on to this one, which is the 1833 Chateau Briand Barley Wine from Rana. And this is I'm so looking forward to this yeah, one. Thank, yeah. thank you as well, Peter, mate, because yeah, uh, viewers and potential viewers that be watching this video, Peter kindly sent me a bottle of this uh, last year, wasn't it? Now, you yeah, I think so. Time, yeah, towards the end of last year, maybe. Yeah, and uh, yeah, so I think I've had this. I got these bottles in April last year, so they've got over a year's age on them. Which thought be a good beer to bring out for review number ten. Yeah. So, uh, last time I had this, I mean, I'll go more into detail when we did a review. But I had another bottle of this um, a couple of months ago, and uh, it had developed quite a bit. And then when I was at the craft beer festival recently, they um, had a, a batch of this that had been aged in sherry casks i think and that was that was interesting so uh, yeah we're going to save this one till last i'm yeah. sure that's going to be a monster of a beer but uh yeah let's get on with the the tasting of the felton's pills up and perfect time of year for these lots of beers right now because it's been absolutely sweltering here in germany these past couple of weeks yeah, it's been on and off here in the UK. We've had some really blinding days, and then it's just been like that constantly for two or three days in a row. Um, it's just started to rain here now as well. It's been relatively quite warm all day, but it's just turned slowly now. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's looking a bit darker outside um, than it was. Well, it's, cause it's getting late, but you know, because of the, the cloud coverage. So, I mean, we had quite a lot of rain last night. So I'd imagine we could potentially have another nice little storm, which I'm happy about. Yeah. German Germany, when it comes to the warmer months, can be almost unbearable, to be honest. So thankfully, German brewing heritage is so many great different styles that are perfect for this time of the year. Yeah, and already looking at it, I mean, it looks considerably darker on camera because it's getting a little bit darker in the apartment now. But when I hold it up to the light, that is a really nice pale golden colour. Very crisp. Yeah. Nice amounts of carbonation as well. Uh, on that one. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot there, but it's not too aggressive, which is nice. Lovely clarity in style. Yeah. And uh, again, I butchered the, the poor on mine, so I've got three fingers worth right of uh, two, Yeah, two, three, three finger compact yeah. whitehead. Well, it certainly looks good to me so far. Yeah. So let's see if I can get any aroma from this one.
nice spicy whiff. Yeah, sort of like a subtle, leafy, spicy hop character, maybe. It's quite funny because I, I did um, I did a live hangout yesterday, and we were drinking um, an Indonesian pilsner. Okay. And I I did say on on the on the video that it, it'd be interesting because I, I knew I was doing this one with you today. Straight away for me, all right, it's a German beer, but the the it, the, the nose is more of a pilsner than what I had yesterday. Definitely, it's got that. Typical spicy, sort of yeah, spicy, <laughs> with yeah, a little bit grainy as well, but a little bit sort of biscuity at the same time. Citrus tones on the nose, yeah. I mean, with beers like this, they're never going to be the most excited smell beers, but this one is no. just—it's a really nice, subtle, well-rounded beer. There's nothing like two in your face about it no flavors are fighting for attention again like a, a slight orangey sort of aroma from it very subtle there not too sweet either It's still inviting though, isn't it, on the nose? Yeah, yeah. That's what you expect. And it's it's like it's what I look for with beers like this. I mean, some people might say, yeah, it's it's a bit hard to review a beer like this because there's not really too many uh, flavour profiles in there that are getting your attention. Yeah. But you can you can definitely smell the difference between a quality pilsner and a low quality one there's enough yeah. in there to it's just got that it's got that like classic german macro pilsner aroma to it and it's definitely a, a, a little bit more citrusy and fruity than like a maybe a czech pilsner yeah which i find a, a, a bit more grainier and earthy but this it has those characteristics but it's lifted by that pepperiness and the, the citrus yeah i'm i'm, I'm ready to, yeah. to jump in yeah. cheers cheers Well, it's definitely yes. carbonated nicely. <laughs> Lovely biscuity sort of mouth to it. Yeah. So crisp. Mm. And that, that mm. carb soft. Yeah. Carbonation. I mean, it, it's because I, I probably drank a bit too fast then. But I got hit by that carbonation a little bit. Well, yeah, that's a lovely. I'm definitely getting um, the hops a lot more than some pills that I've had recently. The water quality in Germany is shit up, isn't it? Oh yeah, that's what. That's why they've got such a good reputation for, for making fantastic beers. And, and they, I'm really pleased with this actually. It's beautiful. The, the mouthfeel is really soft and subtle. Yeah, lovely light body as well. So, it's, did, you, did you say the ABV? Uh, I, I don't nine. think I did. Yeah. 4.5, you know, we're only a couple of minutes. You've got, you got 4.5, have you? 4.5, let me see. Is that a four? Yeah, four point eight. Sorry. Yeah, four point. Yeah, yeah same here. Four point eight. Yeah. And I think is your bottle uh, German language on the back as well, or yes, yeah, all, yeah, all German. Okay, so it's definitely been 
exported. Yeah. What's the uh, best before on yours? Uh, the best before twenty second of the second eighteen. Oh, nice. I think yours is a, a fresher bottle than mine, actually. I've got a best before of the 4th of November 2017. You don't, you don't get that often with these sorts of beers. I like it. I do like it. Yeah. For me, straight away, this, this is a beer. I'd, I'd, if I was over in Germany, like you say, you know, it gets me really baking off. This would be perfect. Whether it be in a bar or you you bought a few bottles and you're staying in a hotel, it, it's, yeah. it's lovely. Yeah. No complaint with it. There's there's no off flavors or anything like that. I mean, it, it's just. I mean, we live in the age where, and I think you'll agree with me, we're we're almost like conditioned to just shit on macro beers all the time yeah but i mean don't get wrong there are some genuinely awful macro beers out there there's some genuinely awful craft beers that i've had as well yeah but this agree, agree there. this has that it's got that familiarity to it to a lot of pills that you'll come across but you can taste that quality in it and that and that's what separates for me german macro beer to any other macro beer around the world for that matter really these know how to do it at that level yeah and i think um, and that's where that that purity law the purity laws come into play paramount yeah 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 but i mean there's no adjuncts in there there's nothing uh, to cut corners with the beer you know for a fact that it's yeah pure. it's yeah because yeah. you know for a fact that the hops and malts that they use they'll either have their own little site or they will get the hot <coughs> just like what craft brewers are doing right now yeah. Yeah. so it's that that lovely quality of the beer and it shines and that, through. Yeah, that, it comes through on the palate, doesn't it? Okay, it's a pilsner, so it's not bang, 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 bang with, with this and that and this. But what you do get from it, it it's it's a well-made beer. Yeah. And it's like one of those things where I'd like to see someone with a straight face tell me that that's swill or piss water or whatever people like to yeah. label it yeah you know, i mean people have different tastes obviously but if you come to me after drinking this beer and say oh that was awful that was such a low quality tasteless product i'm kind of thinking that you're bullshitting there because you're probably a bit too afraid to say that a beer like this is a high quality tasty product mm. and i know i mean you'll, you'll probably come to this towards the end of this review that where you, you just sort of have, have a quick scout online to see what the the say about it and i think i think we both know don't we before we even going on and looking at that information that it's going to get butchered oh yeah one of the sites yeah. is bound to destroy it yeah be a bit more favorable but I mean, we'll, we'll go down that road when when you come to look at that information yeah i can't remember if i, I wrote that stuff down but i can always have a quick look on my phone in a little while but yeah you know what it's like a four pack of this or a six pack of this that's it you sorted mm -hmm. it's perfect abv so you can drink yeah. a considerable considerable amount of it without it Oh, you could, yeah, you, could session, you could session it big time, yeah. Yeah. There's nothing in there where the more you drink it, the more sickly the flavour might get. There's nothing mm. in there that's, like, because, yeah, I love, like, really hoppy IPAs, but if you have five different IPAs in a session, 
you, you start to get, I, I know I do, I start to get burnt out. It's just like, it gets really acidic from the hop acids. Yeah. And then, like the hoppiness just all seems to blend in with one another. Mm. But with this, you know, as long as the bottles have been stored properly, you're not going to have a bad bottle of this beer. No, no. And, and it knocks, my, my personal opinion on it as well, it knocks spots off the, the Vaud Steiner that we did. Oh yeah, it's um, definitely got more character than the... It, yeah, it, it knocks that out of the park. Yeah. But again, the, the, that in itself is still a a very solid yeah yeah i'm, I'm yeah i'm not, I'm not oh, yeah, taking yeah, any, yeah. any away yeah. from that beer but, but it, it just shows you how actually quite varied beers like this can be like you could probably pick three four five similar beers brewed in germany under the purity laws and they're probably going to have characteristics that sort of set them apart from each other. Yeah. Whereas, let's say if you had a pint of Carling, pint of Carlsberg, a uh, pint of Fosters, you would probably be able to because, yeah, we don't just drink beer for the, the buzz. Mm. We drink beer to like, get all those flavours. So you probably yeah. would be able to sort of differentiate those sorts of beers, but with this, I think they they have they all have their own little personalities and characteristics, so they don't just all blend into one, like just same beer, yeah, different they've, they've, brewery sort of thing. They've they've all got their sort of like little yeah, like you say, little got a little signature sort of thing about them. They're all slightly different, but but still really really good maintaining that quality German sort of beer. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I'm, I mean, I've, I'm taken back by it and it's weird and, and people out there, well, it's just a, it's just a day, but I really do like this style of beer. Yeah. Um, and it's, yeah, like I said, it's the first time of me trying it and I'm, I'm sort of taken back by it slightly, really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to forget about this beer. Yeah. Uh, and that's the thing that's, again, I've got nothing against craft beer. I, I love, I just love beer in general, really. If it tastes good to me, I don't care what side of the spectrum it's on. But like when, I find this a lot with craft beer. And you'll come across comments, oh, it was really nice, but it wasn't as nice as last year's batch or yeah, the batch yeah. from last month. Whereas beers like this, because I'm sure there's, there's there's like machinery involved in the brewing of a beer like this because of how big facilities are and that mm. sort of thing. But at the same time, I think because they've got the purity laws, people are a bit more hands-on in the brewing process. So it's not just like man goes into work, types in whatever on the computer, presses the big red button, and then just like goes into the office. I think there'll always be people actually working with the beer. Yeah. But that that's the beauty of beers like this. It's the consistency of them. Yeah. The, the, the probably the only thing that's probably changed with this beer over the years is probably the label. Yeah. And maybe that's just been fine tuned slightly. As for the, the contents, you know, they they produced the recipe back whenever and it, it probably hasn't changed that much, no, has it? Not really. That they, they've, they've got something. They've hit the nail on the head with it, and they think, right, we'll stick with that. Then we'll just run with that and keep bowling it out. And people, people are having it. Yeah. I mean, mine's almost gone. It's just such a. It's like um. It's easily drinkable, isn't yeah. it? it? It's like what. A, Jay Terrio says it's one of those beers that even though we're doing a review of it and we we'll talk about it, it's one of those more like contemplative where you just not it's not a contemplative beer, it's just one that you can 
Yeah, you have four bottles in the fridge. You just pick them up, drink them. Just grab it, grab it, and drink it, it and enjoy it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But Definitely. at the same time, it's actually got like character to it. And it's actually got. It's going to sound cheesy, but it's got like its own personality. Like we were saying, it, there are things to talk about, and I don't think beers like this should be discounted just because it's a mass-produced product. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you there completely. It's um, yeah, really, really, really pleased with it. It's just that soft mouth feel. It, it's it's so so drinkable. This there's, there's a, a nice little bit of lemon running through that. It's bready, biscuity. What would you give it score wise? Score wise, um, set up. See, this this would probably be a hard one for me to score because of the fact that I'm here in Germany, and it does matter if it's uh, yeah one of the big like conglomerate brewing companies or if it's the local brewery down the road sort of thing mm. nine times out of ten i've got access to although slightly different from one another very high quality lagers and pills and so it's like yeah. in the back of my mind i'm almost like comparing it to like different beers that i've had recently or different beers that I drink on a regular basis. But I think... For, I mean, as I know, how, how does it stand up to Augustina? Because that's like all I mean, time. <laughs> yeah, that's I the benchmark. I, I don't <laughs> think it's uh, going to overtake this any time soon. But I'm happy to have this no. beer in this glass if, if I was to go down that road. Yeah. I think this is a very solid 9 out of 10. Um, it it ticks all the boxes for the style. Um, price wise, even the 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 uh, imported bottles, I'd say it's it's got that going for it as well. So yeah, yeah. I think eight or nine out of ten. Maybe the only thing that's stopping yeah, it from I, I was... getting any higher is there are other beers that I would probably pick before that. But at the same time, mm. I know for a fact that if I'm in a supermarket, I'm like, oh, I fancy a couple of beers tonight. Then I, I, I wouldn't mm. say no to a beer like this. I, I could yeah. see myself drinking this on a, a fairly regular basis, to be honest. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm I'm always badgered by my children to, to get takeaways, sort of, not on a regular basis, but, yeah. you know, a treat every now and again sort of thing, you know, dominoes and all that. A couple of these, a couple of bottles of these with a, with a pizza or something, would be perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and that, 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 that's a good thing about it as well. It's one of those things that you can have if you've got people over or if you're going somewhere or if, like, yeah, watching a film or the football or like you, you've got a nice takeaway for the family that sort of thing mm. and it's also one of those beers where if you want to like go yeah you know, have a taste of this i don't think too many people drink it and go oh nah i'm okay with the carling fans because it's, yeah. it's got those familiar flavors to it but it's that like quality that just pushes it up there. Yeah, I, I'm I'm re I'm really liking this beer actually. I I, I chilled mine down, I, I took it out I took it out of the fridge about half an hour before we, we went live. So it's perfect sort of temperature for me. Yeah, not too cold or anything like that. I mean I had it chilled down a little bit. And then it warmed up slightly um, before we came online. But I mean, even if you were to let this get to room temperature, I think it'd still be a satisfying beer to drink. Right. 
Yeah. But yeah. But I'd always want to chill a beer like this down because not not to hide any flavours or anything like that, but yeah, you know, that little bit of a bit more of a refreshment factor added to it. Mm. But you're still going to yeah. get you know the the things that. I don't know, yeah, yeah. It's one that you could chill down, drink at room temperature. It's a solid beer. And it's got it's got that go back factor as well, hasn't it? That now I'm I'm I've got just the last little bit left in my glass. But another one, it just it just be a, you know nice just to have another one. One of them sort of beers. Yeah. It's yeah. the more factor to it. You could you could keep drinking them. Yeah, it, it's like one of those perfect um, related it to the beer tube stuff. A perfect hangout beer to have. Yeah, that sort of thing. What sort of price point is it over there? I think it's around the one euro mark, but you'll sometimes find it on sale for like. Every now and then, eighty cents a bottle, that sort of thing. Probably because they want to get rid of stock. But even when it gets to that point, it's still. I mean, complete. In my book, a complete bargain. Absolute complete bargain. You know, if, even you know, you say like sometimes they reduce it down. But even if it was a euro a bottle, you know, five euros, you got yourself five. Beers, yeah, for the night quality, yeah, cheapest chip. Yeah, <laughs> you're paying more for the other thing that's happening that night, whether yeah. it be like the food or if you, you know, rented a film or something like yeah. that. Yeah, you pay more for that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's it's that that's probably one of my my sort of gripes with when it comes to. Not just the reviewing of beer, but people who are into beer itself. A lot of people still look past beers like this and just go, "Ah, oh, it's yeah, you know, it's it's you know, macro swill." But it's like, no, if you taste it and actually give it a chance, you know, the, there's a reason why Germany's got the reputation that it has. For these sorts of beers, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it, it, it works, it just works. Yeah, for me. it's and, probably and it, up there with one of the best pills that we've done a live review on, if I'm being honest. I, I think it's the best one that I've had. Yeah, I used to be a really, really big fan of Pills and Oracle. Um, and we've, we've, we've both done that, haven't we? Yeah. It was me, you, and Craig, wasn't there? And yeah. Was someone else in 2012? Um, was it that American guy that joined? Um, yeah, uh, Michael. Yeah. And I, I went into the review and it's going to be quality and all that, but I was a bit sort of, uh, it wasn't the best beer of the evening. So we, did, we did two or three, didn't we, that night? Yeah. Um, this this knocks spots off pills and Oh yeah, it's one one of the best pills that, that I've had through the hangout sort of thing that we've done. Yeah, I mean it'd be interesting to um, maybe at some point retrace beers that we've had and like compare two different yeah. beers. Like compare this with maybe I think we were all in agreement that Budfar. When we reviewed it, was yeah. the, the better That's it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. check pills. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to potentially compare them because mm. a lot of people think, oh, pills is a pills now. And it's no, but from my experience, the Czech pilsners and the German brewed pilsners, they're almost two completely different takes on the style. And I think that's that's almost like what they are initially. It's like I can't remember. I mean, I'm sure people who know their beer history a lot more would be able to correct me on this. 
Well, a lot of the times you see these traditional like Czech or German pilsners, and a lot of them were brewed to compete with the popular version of that style from a different country. Yeah. So, yeah, there's yeah. there's a whole lot of interesting things to discover with even the biggest of beers. Mm. And I'm almost more fascinated by like the story of, let's say, Felton's than maybe something like Cloudwater. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know, and I'd, I'd, I'd like to... I'd like to explore these beers that you don't really see from some of these bigger breweries. Like the, uh, here, here in Germany, there's um, quite a big, diverse range of Bex beers, which I know 90% of them are going to be like, oh, what is this? But yeah. at the same time, I'm interested to see like what the yeah. like, like the domestic yeah. market of uh, these sorts yeah. of beers. I mean, I reviewed, um, uh, I think it's called the Argus 12 or 11, which was... Uh, yes, I watched that video, yeah. Which was yeah. A, a Czech Pilsner. And I, I got a really interesting comment from, uh, I think it, the guy's name is Pierre. Uh, I think it's spelled P-E-E-R, his first name. And he was telling me that the, the number... I'm probably remembering this completely wrong, but like the number relates to that specific breweries there, and the rest of the numbers are brewed by breweries within that sort of location. So one brewery brews number one, one brewery brews number two. And it's like that to me would be a much more fascinating video to do a little series on those beers as opposed to, and I'm not. I'm not hated on Cloudwater or anything like that. Far from it. I think they're probably one of the most, from what I've tasted, uh, most exciting craft breweries in Britain. Mm -hmm. But yeah. I'd be much more interested trying these different Czech pilsners than it would mm -hmm. be like a, a series of like the, the double IPAs from Cloudwater. Mm -hmm. like, yeah, like breweries like, like, like Cloudwater and, and any any half decent craft brewery for that matter they're good at what they do with like ipas yeah pale ales stouts imp imp stouts and all that sort of thing but when it comes to i mean i've tried a few of these craft sort of pills and others and they're either they've either morphed into a pale ale yeah or they're just like no different from an half decent macro beer, but you're paying twice as much, you know. Yep. Uh, I, and I've I've been caught out a few times with that. I mean, I, I could, going back a while now, I, I um I bought um I bought a lager from Topping Goliath. Oh yeah. And I paid I paid over a five before it a can of beer <sighs> five quid. And I was a bit sort of like, oh right okay. It was, it was all right, but it was nothing special. It didn't justify the price tag that it yeah. had. Yeah. I would have got more satisfaction from, from having this, definitely. Yeah, but I bet it's one of those things, and I'm, I'm just uh, getting the, the scores ready for this beer. It's one of those things where if you were to look it, look it up on like the beer websites, it would probably get like a 90 plus overall, <laughs> and then like yeah. 95 for style, and it's like... yeah. Nah. And it's a bunch of figures. <laughs> yeah. And it, I'm glad to see a lot of people are bringing up that sort of point now with these beer review websites. Is just how, don't get me wrong, I, I like to use them. I mean, they were very helpful when I was in uh, Munich because I was able to go into Rate Beer using like the free Wi Fi and train station and see, oh, what like beer shops are there. Yeah, and it gives you like a list of like places to go beer wise. But I mean, we've talked about the slides. You look at the ratings on these websites, and it's like, how can the best German style lager not be 
a German brewed lager. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fabricated for their own needs, I think. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, this this to me would I'd rather pay one euro for this than take a chance on like a, a six euro imported American pills, craft pills or something like mm. that. Yeah. But, um, and, and and I mean to be fair, in this day and age as well, the sort of labelling um I'm not being I'm not being horrible to it. it it's slightly dated, but it, then again yeah. it doesn't need to be changed, does it? When you when you you know if you were no. to stand it up against a, a craft pilsner that's probably all singing and dancing in a in a nice package can with a really loud design, you know, uh, from a from a, a consumer point of view, you're going to be leaning towards that, aren't you? Because it's more in your face. Yeah. But is it going to deliver the same? Mm, it's hard to know, isn't it? Yeah. And and that that's thing. It's like. To find out, you're paying much more as you would yeah. these sorts of beers. So I don't know. It's, I mean, I don't know if um, have Beaver Town ever brewed something like a pilsner or a lager. Just uh, just pulling that brew they, out of thinner. Yes, um, they did. I've, I've actually reviewed what the beer that they did. Ah, oh, now. Uh, and no wiser, it was called. And that was um, a dry hot pills. They had it in, 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 a, in a wacky can. It was alright. I, I, I did it a while back now. It was alright, but it was it was crafted up so it had a bit of a twist on yeah. it. You know, it wasn't like a an authentic pilsner. Yeah. And I mean, there's there's a big, well, there's been a, a debate about this for quite a while now here in Germany, but with the purity laws, and a lot of people are saying that it stifles creativity and uh, things like that, which I could totally see that point. But then part of me is saying, well, look at all the the beers that you have that are. You know, in, imported the world over um, mm. that you should be proud of. Yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd just like to see a craft brewery outside of Germany brew maybe just like a series of like these traditional German styles, mm. you know, without all the bells and whistles and. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna dry hop this so much that it's just gonna taste like you're saying, like a pale ale or an IPA. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but uh, it just. I actually really love drinking these sorts of beers. And I do. I, I do. I, I find it. I find it pleasing drinking. It's a new beer to me. I've never had it before, and I'm really, really glad that. We did it now because it's been going for donkey's years. Yeah. I suddenly discovered it, and it's like a new find to me, even though it's, by you know, it's, it's not a new beer or anything. But it's definitely a beer. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be purchasing it again. Oh yeah, yeah, me for so, sure. Yeah, yeah. It's just, but it's just a very drinkable, tasty pilsner. And uh, yeah, so I'll quickly read you out the uh, the scores that it gets online. Prepare oh, to be yeah. surprised. <laughs> so, Rate Beer gives this overall nineteen out of a hundred. With say that again, nine. You say ninety. Ninety. Oh, I, I think they'd be uh, pushing it if they ever managed to get <laughs> up to ninety. Uh, nineteen overall. 44 for style so you work out oh, that difference uh, beer advocate 
a lot more fairer. Uh, they give this 79 overall and the bros rated it as well, which I think is roughly fair because of yeah. what else is available. And uh, let's see. Uh, Untapped gives this 3.16 out of 5. So it, it just seems that Rape Beer, once again, has uh, reared its ugly head. Yeah, they seem to be the masters of uh, that, don't they? Oh, yeah, especially now <laughs> with the, the whole AV InBev stuff. Yeah, yeah. As, if, as if you needed a reason not to take Rape Beer seriously. Yeah. But yeah, I think we're off to a good start. Very, a very yes, nice definitely. surprise. I mean, I knew that this was going to be a good beer, but it's it's only when you sit down and properly take it all in that you realise just how good these sorts of beers are. So yeah, very happy with that. One. So very excited for this one. Moving on to the main course. Oh yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to this one. Mm -hmm. Let me just get some uh, better lighting so you can actually see the big. It's got considerably <laughs> dark here. There we go, much better. So, let's move you out the way. So, the 1833 Chateau Brion barley wine. Rana. That's, that's got to be that's got to be Elvis on it, hasn't it? Oh yeah. Or is it like a weird Gary Glitter? <laughs> I have no idea who that is. I've had people say that's Elvis. Um, I'm not too sure. Also, it's like, it's like Adamant look to it as well. Yeah. But uh, yeah, so this is a barley wine, which I'm not going to lie. It's a style that I'm not the biggest fan of because of the fact that it's like a, a high ABV beer and very, very mm. malty. But this one is uh, clocking in at 10.5%. So it's uh, yeah. a little bit of a monster, but not too heavy. And uh, yeah, like I was saying at the start of this video, this is the a bottle of the 2016 version. I think they have uh, released other batches of this one. Ooh, excuse me. And uh, yeah, so this is a barley wine. That is brewed with Brion, which uh, I don't think I can name you any other beer that I've had that has used uh, that strain of yeast before. Uh, let's see if I can read the ingredients. So the hops are Halatower and Spalter, I think that is. Uh, let's see, roasted uh, barley malts and wheat malts have been used. And then they've used uh, Chateaubriand wine yeast. So, um, yeah, quite an interesting yeah. uh, list. I mean, the reason I'm not the biggest fan of the style uh, is because high ABV and it's you've got to be really in the mood to uh, drink a beer like this. Yeah, it's a heavy beer. Yeah, yeah, and I've not actually drank too many barley wines. It has to be said, but without spoiling any tasting notes, I have had this before, and I had the sherry aged version. And okay. uh, yeah, I think we're in for something interesting. Let's just. Cool. But yeah, beautiful artwork. 
and a plain black crown. So without any further ado, let's get this one opened. Mine's a little bit active. No, I'm going to let that settle a little bit and see how it changes. Uh, before I carry on, I'm going to quickly uh, respond to some comments. Uh, so Craig says, hi, my friends, and also goes on to say, I love watching you guys. Great to see you, Dean. Keep up the joint reviews. No smoking, though. No. Cheers to uh, you, Craig. Uh, yeah, cheers, Craig. Thomas McCarthy says, hi. Hello, Chiefs. And Hi. Christoph from Ale De Degustation so, says German quality. Uh, yes, it indeed was. Yes. Yeah. Cheers to you, my friend. So, on to the beer then. It's got a lovely, sort of like dark to it. Slight bit of with the head that I mean, 10.5 percent. I haven't pulled it all in, but it's a nice little bit of a head on there, just about half a finger of off whiteness, but it's retaining it slightly. Yeah, I mean, I've got a nice lining of head. Um, it was a little bit bigger when I poured it, but I did pour it quite tamely for once, which is very rare it's for me, leaving a nice lacing. Oh yeah. Slow carbonation in that. It's sort of really, really slow and slow. Almost uh, a slight bit of haze as well. In there. So it's definitely an unfiltered beer. Yeah, a bit of a cloudiness. It's got sort of like a slight I don't know, it's a, it's like a slight toffee look to it. Almost like it's amber, but it's got some slight brown hues in there. Definitely a, yeah. a lovely looking beer. Yeah. So, let's see what we get on the other Keep splashing everywhere. Oh, holy shit. God, that just like, sings out of the glass. Just, just, it just screams like. You can smell the booze in it, can't you? Oh, yeah. It's like you get that boozy aroma, but it's not like that harsh alcohol booze aroma, if that makes sense. It's like... Yeah, there's, there's something else in there, isn't there, that's, yeah. that's making it sort of really sort of interesting on the nose. I'm getting um, almost like a, a toffee apple sort of aroma on this one. And it's sort of like I get my image of like stone fruits, almost like something like um. I I, I completely get that toffee thing. Yeah, but it's sort of like I can, like yeah. a really intense, like um, desserty toffee note. But it's definitely. I can. It, it, it it almost reminds me of um. Uh, a pudding wine you know with that with that added sweetness to it yeah not that i drink many pudding wines but i've had a, yeah. i've had a few it, it, dessert wine it's got it's got that lovely sweetness to it oh yeah like a little bit of like a brown sugar character as well yeah, but it, sort of it, thing. yeah. it never goes into like overly like cakey desserty sort of territory it's more like as if you were to like maybe poach like a pear or like steep like a, a raisin mix or something like that for a Christmas pudding. I think I think the, the best analogy is what you said, Peter, uh, the, like a toffee apple. Yeah, very very appley. 
I'll almost like smell a, the sharpness of an apple. Yeah, give you. yeah, that yeah. like it's like sharp acidic apple character, but I almost got like um maple syrup as well. It's definitely got that sort of like glazed fruit character. Yeah, lots of fruity tones. Very, I mean, it's you don't have to be too close to the glass to get a good sniff of this beer. Yeah, I mean, yeah, even from here, it, it's got a, a beautiful perfume and whiff to it. It's yeah, yeah, we're room for a treat. <laughs> yeah. So, thank you to everyone who's watched all these live reviews. Yeah. And uh, thank you. Here's to ten more. Cheers. Prost. Bloody hell. Yeah. The first thing that I could say about this beer is you only get the slightest inkling of that alcohol on the back end. Hardly for me. Yeah. It's it's you it's just delicate. You just know it's there. But it's very, very slight. Wow. Again, a really soft, subtle mouthfeel. Yeah, really nice and smooth. Nice carbonation that just helps distribute the beer around the palate. Yeah. But aside from that, just just that little bit, just to give it that little yeah. bit of bounce on the yeah. on the tongue. Yeah. But I mean, I accidentally spilt some on my hands. It, it's sticky already, and just. Your mouth is just coated with this lovely, gentle, syrupy character. It's very, very syrupy slickness to it. Yeah. But yeah, it, it's such a a nice, mellow... It, very mellow. ...taste in very, beer. Very, very There's mellow. no harsh characteristics or anything like that with this beer. And... and what what is that um what is that french uh dessert uh is it tart, tart, tartan is it or what how is it? uh yeah i think i know what you mean you know what i mean with, with, with you, you what you, you with you saying that glazed apple sort of thing you have segments of apple on it don't you so it's a tart yeah yeah it's very it's deserty, but not in a like a heavy, dense, like cakey sort no, of way. It's... There is sweetness in there. There's no yeah. getting away from yeah. that. But it, it's not. It's not. It's not overpowering. It's subtle. It's gentle. Yeah. Fabulous. It almost reminds you as well of um, boiled sweets. Pair drops. Yeah, those. I'm getting like um. I don't know what they're called, but the the circular ones are always individually wrapped. Yeah, it's got that slight confectionery sugar to it as well. It's a very for me as well. It, I mean, I haven't really tried that many Belgian beers, but it's got a bit of a Belgian sort of feel to it as well, like a, a quad. Yeah. yeah. With that that candied sort of sweetness that most Belgian beers have in it's it's got that running through it slightly for me as well. Yeah. There's, I mean, that 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 wine yeast. Even if you didn't know it was in there, it's got that slight like, grape flavour to it. White. Yeah. And um, almost like um, like an apple wine sort of thing because I'm yeah. still getting that apple a apple. lot in this beer. And then the sweetness, 
you'd associate it with like a, a, a toffee apple, just a little bit of sweetness on the finish, but not too intense, not sickly sweet. It's not it's not off putting sweet. Yeah. And again, I mean, I salute the the brewery for for making a, a beer like this. With the ABV is hidden, remarkable. Yeah. I mean, ten point five. It's you're not getting it at all. You're getting warmth, but nothing. You get you get no alcohol burn from it, are you? No, no. There's no like because you sometimes get that slight ethanol sort of yeah. sensation yeah. from some of these high ABV beers, which when you obviously compare it to the other flavours in that specific beer that has that flavour, it sort of works, but it's noticeable. But mm. this sort of does have that slight liqueur. And again, I think you hit the nail on the head, that dessert wine. This is yeah. one of those beers where this would be perfect after a meal. You, you didn't need to have dessert. You had a nice mm. sort of... Um, like a nice meat dish, mm. and if you wanted something to to finish the evening off nicely, then I think this beer would go <laughs> perfectly Perfect. with something like that. And I'm, I'm sure there'd be people out there who would be able to pair a beer like this, like spot on, with a certain dish. It's one of those. I mean, everyone goes on about how wine is like the connoisseur's drink. But if you drink something like this, you realise just this is the new wine. What, isn't it? what you yeah, what you can do yeah. hmm. within the parameters of beer. And again, you, my 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 nice my my fictional evening meal night. I'd a, a you know um, a nice bit of steak for my for my main course, and I, and I swirled it down with the Veltins. I had a, a beautiful sticky toffee pudding, some custard. I had that, and now I'm going to sit back in a nice armchair, bottle of Rana 1833, and yep. just sit back. Yep. And again, perfect. This was brewed within the purity laws. Wow. So it's like. It just shows you what you can do if you follow magic. Magic has been made, yeah. hasn't it? With this, yeah. Uh, and that's the thing that that's the thing about this brewery is I think I've mentioned it before, but they're the oldest family-owned brewery in Bavaria, I and mean, it's going since like a, the 13th century, I think, like that, something around those lines. So of course they've done the traditional Heller's beer. Uh, wheat beer, dunkel beer, then like the seasonal like winter beer sort of things. But they have gone into the craft market like full steam ahead. Mm. And I think when they started making beers like this, that must have been such a big expensive risk to do. Mm. I mean, the, the, yeah. the, craft, the craft scene is still really quite young here in Germany. And for a, a family-owned traditional brewery to not only go into the craft beer market, but actually put everything that they have into the start. Mm. It's not just, oh, we're going to brew a pale ale, an IPA. Yeah. Uh, this is definitely more complex than, than any of them sort of styles of beer. So very, a very bold move to come out of their comfort zone of the palaces and, and wheat beers. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean this. This has no bias with uh, my take on the beers, but the the family that runs it now, um, I've I've met the the husband and wife uh, Alois and Stephanie a few times, and they're such lovely people as well, mm. and you can see that the path they've got comes through in the beers, mm. and. This for me is probably one of the best examples of German craft beer that I've, I've definitely tasted since yeah. getting into this sort of stuff here in Germany. Do, do you think, 
that little bit of age has, has just pushed it along the way as well to, to, to make it a, a, a more of a smoother experience. I think so. I mean, I'd have to go back to my original beer review, but I remember remembering this being a lot more fruitier and not just like that those fruit characters you get from hops but yeah genuine yeah. like apple i'm getting loads and loads yeah, of I, apple I, with I, this beer i can't escape from that toffee apple thing now it's you, you've said it and it's it's it just it, it appears with the aroma yeah. and in the taste yeah so i mean i remember this being an absolutely beautiful beer when I was drinking it somewhat fresh. But I think this is one of those beers where if you've got a couple of bottles of it, keep hold of Put one up. Yeah. Definitely. It's it's a beautiful experience. Yeah. Because I knew I knew that this would be a perfect beer to send someone. And I think I'll be able to get more bottles of this for a relatively affordable price for what it is. Yeah. I think yeah. you're paying about two to three euros for a bottle of this now, maybe a little bit more. But for that price, fantastic. You, yeah, you know, fantastic. You're paying more for much more easier beers to produce, like IPAs and pale ales. So, yeah, this. And I'll again, have to pick up again and it, see if I can taste it. It's an old year beer as well, isn't it? You, you, could drink, you could drink this in the height of summer yeah. or in the, you know, an evening, heading off in the evening, and you'd, you'd thoroughly enjoy it, or, or uh, you know, a, a winter's night, yeah. log fire and all that. You know, it, it works both ways for me. Yeah, it, it's definitely got characteristics that make this uh, drinkable, no matter what time of year it is. I mean, again, going back to that apple stuff, it reminds me of um, like when you go to a Christmas market and they've got the like the hot mead, the the um, again apple yeah. one. It, it's like yes, yeah, ladles, ladles of that out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think I've drank this way too quickly. But it's a surprisingly easy beer to drink. It is. You have to remind yourself that you are actually drinking a 10.5% beer because yeah. if you don't give yourself a nudge on that, just down it. You can keep, you know, going at it. It's, it's got yeah. that factor to it. I think if I was to go back sort of four or five years and have this beer in front of me, I wouldn't have appreciated it as much as I do now. I probably would have pulled faces at it. Yeah. I but, but I love it. I absolutely love it. It's so inviting. Yeah. And it's kind of like when you hear the term barley wine or if you see a barley wine on the shelf it gets a little bit formidable it's like uh, do i buy that or yeah and yeah I, i've definitely seen like similarities with this and like you're saying some of the belgian style beers like maybe uh, yeah. a quad De or something like that definitely got a quad thing yeah. about it yeah, you get that. You definitely get that French, like Flanders, Belgian sort of quality yeah, from it. Yeah. And I think what really makes this barley wine stand out, I mean, I'm no expert with wine or anything like that, but that Chateau Brion wine yeast just, to sound a little bit poncy, it, it sort of adds that like sophistication to the beer. Mm almost yeah no i get i get i get what you mean with that and and what you're saying about the, the actual style itself for me as well it's not something it's not a style that pops straight into my head 
yeah it's it's almost i feel ashamed to not really be in touch with the style you know you know ipas stouts pilsners they're not, they're at the forefront for me yeah and beers like this oh, barley wine. oh yeah yeah there are barley wines yeah yeah really that there's not i suppose there's quite a few about isn't there but oh yeah you just oh yeah there's there's nothing that i can criticize about this beer i can't fault it i mean the okay if i was to have tried like even a hundred different barley wines that be able to compare this to say this barley wine and characteristics on that one but with the experience that i've had from this style this to me is just it's almost like you can't really compare it to anything you should just enjoy it as it is yeah it, yeah but I, I just think it's so amazing that a beer like this can be brewed again by by a family-owned traditional brewery but also mm. within the the confines of the the purity laws yeah and it's just it's big 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 massive achievement yeah, really yeah. For what, what, what they produced and what risks they took as well to, to make a beer like this and i mean my opinion and the taste of it it's magnificent it's paid off yeah for you know i mean even on like after the back end of the beer when like you sometimes get with the high abv beers again from that alcohol you get like little not tingling sensations on the palate but like you, you you get the impression that you've had a high abv beer you just get that feeling mm. in your mouth but with this yeah this could have just been like a not like a fruit juice but as if you just um like got a big pot just put loads of different fruits in there put a bit of sugar on it and just stewed them down it up. Yeah. yeah yeah and i'm not the biggest fan of apple either but i can't I can't escape the apple flavors in this beer it's just but it's it's not it's a very subtle apple isn't it yeah you've got like the whole shebang of it you know, the, a, 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 you know a granny smith and, the, and the, the peel as well you know the whole thing sort of going into it um because there, there is that little bit of sharpness to it a little bit of sweetness from it like a what you get from a, a cider almost you know yeah in terms of the sweetness of the apple again isn't it it's 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 a key moment yeah i mean I you've had it before so you, you you sort of knew what you were getting yeah i mean I'm, I'm glad to have shared this with someone else as well yeah that that's yeah i mean it would have been great uh if i'd have been able to have sent uh, a lot of you guys a bottle of this not just to do like a, a live hangar and but just yeah. to see what you'd think of of the beer and um yeah there's it's just such a beautiful beautiful beer for me mm. and um you know once you've drank a beer like this it's like do i need to drink anything else tonight or should i just just save you the yeah, moment just take the time with it yeah 
uh, and it is it, it 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 demands it demands your attention it's one of them sort of beers yeah it's respect in a glass isn't it oh yeah and you could uh, i mean uh, the longer you made it last the more you'll probably be able to pick out of it as well Oh yeah, this is one of those beers where you could just keep the camera running, keep pulling stuff out, yeah, all the time from it. And it's very, very complex beer. Yeah, you take a sip, get say what you got from it. Yeah, take a sip ten minutes later, and you go, "Well, I'm getting this now, and I can yeah, yeah. right here yeah. on my the left corner of the palate, I'm getting it. it's like <laughs> you know, it's it's one of those beers where if you you know you give this someone says oh all beer just tastes the same it's like oh no it doesn't no it doesn't <laughs> no 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 you've got a hell of a lot to experience before you can uh... yeah i mean and, and and no disrespect to the beer that we did before which which was fantastic but this this is in its own league this is yeah. you know it's just like a completely different thing altogether. Mm. Um, I think this is one of those beers where if you're like we are, we're not too familiar with the barley wine style, or if you're a little bit put off by the style itself when you turn around the bottle and say, oh God, that's a 10, 11, 12 AB fee beer it's like it's one of those beers where you can drink this and not be complete i mean don't get right like if someone's going from a calling to something like this then it's going to be a complete mm. yeah, yeah it's a complete change but if you sort of like dip in the toe in the world of not just craft beer but uh just the world of beer in general Mm. It's one of those ones where it's subtle enough for you to drink it and enjoy it without being overwhelmed by too many aspects of it and without being mm. like hit over the head with like this alcohol burn and boozy aroma as it comes out. I mean, I've found with a lot of the high ABV beers, you'll drink them and the alcohol might be masked. But like after you finished it, you get that sort of like almost as if you've been drinking like spirits all night. We've got that like lingering booziness on your breath, booziness. sort of thing. Yeah, boozy boots. Yeah. But this, it, it just leaves no yeah. traces, aside from a little bit of a sticky, sticky mouth from the like residual syrupiness of the beer. Mm. It, 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 it's just. It's almost as if they've been brewing this specific beer for years. Mm. Which they, they probably have on like a, a much smaller scale, obviously, to perfect uh, the beer. Like just like giving it to employees and family friends and stuff. And, yeah. But this to me just tastes like a, a refined product that's been around for almost like uh, some of the the fullers sort of like vintage ales the vintage yeah the vintage stuff yeah yep. yeah it's got it's it, it's got character yeah it, it just ooze, it oozes character you were saying earlier on about like personalities and stuff like that this this has got character this has oh yeah i mean I yeah, think yeah. This would be a perfect beer for a bottle show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So hopefully, if that happens in the next year or so, I'll have to get a bottle and uh, yeah, a bottle of this. Yeah, I, I think it'll go down the storm. To be oh honest, yeah. You know? yeah. I can't see anybody sort of putting faces at this. No. I mean, I don't know if is all of your beer in the glass now, or 
Yeah, I'll put the whole lot in now, yeah. Because when I swelled it round, it got, I mean, even on this uh, crap quality camera, you can just see how, like, murky and dense the beer becomes once you've put everything in it. Yeah. So, you know, you're getting all of that flavour in there. And it, it almost looks like I've got, like, a, again, we're just going back to that apple. I just can't get it. I can't escape it. It's almost looking like I've got, like, a an apple juice or, mm -hmm. like, a fruit juice mix. Well, yeah, that, that to me is, like, a world-class beer in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I'd go I'd, 10 out of 10 all day long for this. Yeah. Yeah, you know, if, if all body wines taste like this, then I'm going to be sort of wines. Yeah, they probably won't be. Yeah. This, this is probably a, a very big exception to the style. I don't know. I, I need to. I need to get my toes in and try some more barley wine. Yeah, I, I need to try. Just out of respect to this one more than anything. Yeah. I mean, I think the only other barley wine that I've got is from another German brewery called Crew Public. And uh, when I was in, uh, you've probably already seen the photos and stuff. But uh, for anyone who's watching, um, I was in Munich, and I just went to like a, a department store just to see if yeah they've got like a, a small like wine spirits and beer section see if they've gotten craft beer i was in there and they were having a sale on a brewery called uh, crew republic who were from munich okay and uh, they were selling all of their beers for 1.99 one euro 99 per bottle so i was like oh I, I, i've drank a, a fair few of their beers maybe they've got a couple that i've not actually got to try yet so i picked up like their fairly recent West Coast IPA, which I was happy about because I've wanted to try that for a while. And then like I noticed that they had the barley wine in there. So I was like one ninety nine for a barley wine? <laughs> yeah, you've got to be an idiot to say no to something like that. Yeah. Even if you yeah. hate the style, if you see something like that, it's like just out of being intrigued by it yeah yeah, yeah. so yeah hopefully i can age that like I did with this bottle but um yeah I, I think it as much as i've enjoyed this style i think the style itself it's not one that i'll go to on a, a really regular basis no it, it's a moment beer isn't it yeah it's a special moment yeah. beer yeah a finisher um yeah it's got it's got it's got its purpose it's got its place it's got its time it's not like you know you, you, uh, uh, you know like, uh, an ipa or a paleo you just keep going and going and going you know yeah this this is definitely a finish of beer yeah and it's like just string these every now and then so they've got that power mm. to them and they've got that effect because yeah it'd be, it'd be great to have like access to like do a week's worth of barley wines but at the end of the week you'll be like Oof, yeah you don't think i want to see a barley wine anytime yeah. soon yeah yeah it's it spoil it it's spoil it yeah but yeah, this is it's gone down way too easily. That's probably the only criticism that I could give. And it's not even a criticism. I'm I'm sort of fascinated to how they've produced a beer like this to have such an easy drinkability factor to it. Yeah. It's it's scary almost, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, this is a horrible comparison, but like something like um, stuff like Kestrel Super, and you know um, you're drinking it, don't you? Yeah, you know you're drinking it every yeah. sip. You can pull a face. Yeah, 
I, I used to drink that just for the purpose of getting absolutely shit faced. Oh yeah. And you sort of think, well, I know what I'm in for. It's a vile, horrible, alcoholic taste, but it will get me pissed. Drink, drink, drink. Yeah. This this will do exactly the same to you, but every sip is rewarding. Yeah, every sip is just like. Mm. But yeah, and I, I knew it was going to be a, a special one, but yeah, yeah. Even when you drink it, you're like, oh, that was that was special. <laughs> so like, yeah, that was good. It's like no, that that was. Yeah, this, this is special, definitely. Yeah. Thank you very much, mate, for sending me. Oh, well, I'm no glad to have tried it, to be yeah. honest. I think that, I mean, that was a perfect beer to do as a, yeah. a live review. Yeah. It's one of them sort of beers of 2017. This, if, I, if I'm making a list up of all the beers that I've had or yet to try, this is going to be in there for sure, whether it's a top 10 or a top 20. This beer will make an appearance. Oh yeah, and rightly so as well. I mean, I was uh, I was talking before about the the version of this that I had at the festival this year, which was the the sherry aged sherry version. one. Yeah. I'm not sure if it was the the same uh, this specific barley wine or if it was just a another barley wine, but I think it was because uh, I'm getting similar flavors in there. But that like. Mm. Again, it was like even though it was aged in sherry, you got the flavour of the sherry, but you didn't get the harshness of yeah. the of what you'd expect it to be. And it just sort of like took it in a completely new direction. But I even tried uh the the regular or the, the one that we're drinking now, uh thing which would have been a, a recent batch and it was just it was still a beautiful beer and again it was like rana the they're a, a well-regarded bavarian traditional brewery but yeah. they brewed for the festival like almost 10 different beers just for that one beer festival so they're rarely embracing this yeah. craft beer culture and they're doing it in in a way that's You'd think that they were almost a craft brewery before being a traditional one. Yeah. But even their traditional beers, like the Hellers and Export Hellers and Keller beers and wheat beers, especially, just uh, They're solid. Yeah. And it, they're, they're one of those breweries where it doesn't matter what the beer is, if you see one of their beers, you should definitely pick it up. Mm. Um, I can't think of too many breweries who I'd say that exact same thing for. Well, you've got a, like you said, you know, a small sort of family run brewery. When they're bowling out beers like this, the best of luck oh, yeah. through their journey. Yeah, and and I, I, you, you just know that they will succeed. Oh, yeah. They will, you know, make waves in the in the beer industry you'd like to see it be international with, with stuff like this oh yeah that that, you know. that i know for a fact that this beer alone would be a big seller on the export oh yeah yeah you, you could sit this in front of any sort of professional beer enthusiast and they're gonna love it they're gonna love it yeah yeah and it, it's just like we were saying about the, the Feltons. Yeah, you give this beer to someone, aficionado or whatever you want to call them, hobbyist, and they drink that beer. You tell me with a straight face that that is not a good beer. Yeah. But yeah, that's absolutely wonderful stuff. And anyone who's watching this live or when it gets uploaded to YouTube afterwards. If you ever see this, or if you're ever in Bavaria, try and make an effort to, to pick this beer up. I mean, the, there's so many great beers in Bavaria now from the craft breweries, but if you want 
such a satisfying and indulgent beer. Yeah. Fill your boots with fill your boots with good quality German pilsners and lagers. Yeah. And then finish your day off, evening off. And you just want to keep going back to Germany all the time. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know there's a hell of a lot of stuff going on in the world of craft beer, like all the stuff in Sweden and the Scandinavian countries, then back in the yeah. UK and uh, in certain parts of America. But I think I think Germany is the place. It's not the place to be, I'd, I'd say, because I don't think there should be just one place you should go if you're into craft beer. But there's so much going on in germany now in terms of the craft beer industry and scene and so many places popping up so many breweries coming along now it, yeah. it's definitely a unique drinking experience for sure yeah there's a, there's a little bit of you know every country has, has got that little bit of goodness about it with with regards to, to making making good beer yeah like say germany you know rock steady traditional brewing culture that have jumped jumped in the little pool of craft beer and, and started dabbling and then got, you know your classic belgian beers mm -hmm. like you said guys they're having a, a pop of the cherry uk and of course, America, and and, and even in Australia, and, and all around there, you know, it's, it's, it's lovely to see. Yeah. Uh, I drank that way too quickly, but it was just... Finished it, bloody hell. <laughs> yeah. yeah that, that, that should see me through the night, for sure. Yeah. Um, would you... Um, is there any specific... Um, uh, cigars that you could potentially think of that would go well with this? I haven't had a, a cigar for a very, very long time. Okay. Um, I wouldn't say I'd give up doing it. I mean, I, I don't do nothing on my other channel anymore. Now, yeah. But um, a, a decent Cuban cigar would, would, uh, would fit on nicely with that. Yeah, a Cohiba, Monte Cristo, something like that. Something with a nice little bit of earthiness to it. Bit of, I mean, most cigars have that, that sort of earthy, coffee sort of leatheriness to them. Yeah. This would balance it nicely with the sweetness in it. Yeah. Yeah, it's like. I don't know. It's like I'm sure different people will would say different things, and um, I think even the, the end of the day. yeah, I think even the uh, uh, the guys at Rana, um, they they've been working with some chefs who have been like not only uh, pairing different beers but also yeah. like using them in recipes. And again, it's got a sort of like cooking wine character to it, so it's like. Mm -hmm. You know, if you could do so many things with a beer like this. You, know, you could just sit and enjoy it. You could have it with something. It could complement certain things beautifully. You could even cook with it if you wanted to, or uh, potentially if you're into the sort of uh, mixology sort of things, you could make a, a nice sort of cocktail with this because of those like fruity... <clears throat> Uh, tones and obviously with the the wine yeast plays character it's just and again it goes back to that point for me it just shows you how even though i hate to use this word how sophisticated something like beer can be as much mm -hmm. as I, I i'm a fair believer that you know beer is you know the, the everyday person's drink it's the universal it's the beer that can bring people together. It's the 
you know, it doesn't matter where you are on the the social ladder or whatever like that. It is one yeah. of those things. And, and this and this this is a, a definitely a treat beer. Yeah, I could see myself. You know, the cheese board even it could beautiful with a nice oh, yeah. little bit of cheese. Yeah, yeah. Good wonders. Yeah. And then and then the other scale, open a box of dairy milk up. Yeah, like that beer chocolate pairing sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's worth it. Yeah. Because of that sweetness that it's got. And then, with, like you say, you say with, with, it, with that apple in it, that's what made me think of the cheese. It, it worked beautiful with a bit of cheddar. Oh yeah, a nice strong sharp cheddar with this would be. Yeah. But then again, I think yeah. a good strong cheddar goes well with uh, especially a lot of the German beers I've found. Just like a nice uh, simple few slices of simple rye bread, a little bit of cheese. It's like a little bit of cheese. It's a great little like beer snack. Yeah. So I'll see if I can find any uh, scores for this. I'm sure there are. Because I think it's... Uh, I think we're both 10 out of 10 with this one. Yeah, all day long. All day long. So I'll see yeah. if I can find any scores for this. Should have had this all ready, but... That's just what this... Uh, the clueless drink is about clueless by name clueless by nature <laughs> so there's no score for this beer yet on great beer which is i, I kind of expected that uh let's see what we got on on tapped <coughs> Uh, on Untapped, this has got a 3.51 out of 5, but that's from that's from only 62 ratings, which okay. I can I don't fully agree with that, but I can definitely appreciate that view on, on a weighted average. Mm -hmm. And Beer Advocate says. I don't think it's got a score on Beer Radcliffe. But uh, yeah, all scores are subjective, but to me, that's a 10 out of 10 yeah. all day. Really, really is. So, a beer, a beer that will stick with me. Oh, yeah. yeah. And I'm glad that I could have shared it with someone. Yeah. And uh, I think very fitting beer for a. A good milestone. Yes. So that, that's yeah. definitely going to be hard to beat for a review, live review number twenty. Yeah, yeah. That is the crumb de la crumb. <laughs> <laughs> so, I think I'm going to call it there. I might keep the if uh, you want to stay online for a little bit longer. I might sort of just keep the the stream going, maybe for. To finish the beer or another beer or something like that but um as far as the live review goes i think we're going to call it here because uh, yeah. yeah two absolutely fantastic beers in comp two completely different uh parts of uh craft beer that sounded so cool so i don't know what you know what i mean though. i know what you mean mate. Yeah. i know what you mean so you know yeah. it, it just shows you but high quality doesn't always have to just be stuff like a barley wine or like a, a barrel aged stout or anything like that. You know, we've, we've drank two very impressive. Both fantastic beers, really. Yeah. Both, both fantastic beers. Two beautiful beers two that were... Completely different purposes. Yeah. But I've, I've, enjoyed, I've enjoyed both beers thoroughly. Yeah. A nice little pair in there. Yeah, good, good suggestion, mate. Yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with that one. Um, God knows what we're going to do for number eleven. I'm sure we'll we'll come up with something interesting. But uh, yeah, I'll quickly. Yeah, I, I, I did. I did pick a beer up. Another beer up from um, 
some cottage wines, which is a German beer. Let me just go and get it. I can't okay. remember what it's called. So I'll quickly read some of the new comments. So Thomas McCarthy says, I'm back. What are you drink? Um, well, we've been doing the Felton's Pills there and the Rana Barley Wine. And Chad over at Albina Rana says, I'll show you a dead pony. I'm sure you will, Chad. Uh, <laughs> cheers to you both, by the way. So what was the, the beer that you managed to uh Wombacker, dark version. Ah, okay. I don't know if you can get your hands on that. I'll have a look for that one. Um that could be yeah. one of those things where it's slightly relabeled for the export market, but I'm sure I'll be able to find Yeah, just have a look have a scout yeah, about I'll have a you, look you might that. be able to get it. If you can, then maybe we can do something with that yeah but i did think come back here that's quite a german again isn't it i think so yeah i think they're like yeah. they are one of the the big boys yeah like the almost like top three level of uh most popular german breweries but uh yeah there you go a little bit of a potential sneaky peek at what we might maybe. be doing yeah, next maybe. time you know no? I'd definitely be up for that one. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, my yeah. Craig says, any hangout tonight? Um, I don't know if I'll be, if I am online, I don't think I'll be online for that much longer, but I'm sure I can uh, send people the link when we go offline just for a little beer chat. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as, as far as this 10th uh, live review goes, pretty damn good one. Pretty damn good one. Great beer, great company, and uh, yeah. all you guys. Are, always, my friend. Yeah, everyone watching this is great as well. And uh, yeah, you guys are the reason why. Well, I like doing this because of the the friendships and the the conversation. The fact that I can actually talk about beer with people and stuff like that. But um, the fact that people watch and get involved just makes it that much more enjoyable the whole youtube experience in general to be honest yeah. so uh yeah thank you guys yeah. for watching and uh, if you've got any suggestions for beers that we should review in the future feel free to uh leave it in the comments or get in touch of course go subscribe to dean's channel at dean's beer reviews link is already in the description box and uh, yeah, so here's to 10 more live reviews and to review 11. And I've got an empty glass, so that should be refilled. <laughs> Cheers, guys. A tiny little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers. See you guys later. <laughs>